we played well against this team. I mean, a couple of years ago, they beat us in the playoffs. We didn't have uh, a couple of really important pieces, but um, we tried some different things tonight. We there were a couple of growing pains, but overall, I think our guys had pretty good game plan discipline in terms of when you play against a great offense and great offensive players, you can't use your standard defense. You have to have great player defense as well. And Steph Curry obviously warrants that because he's one of the greatest to ever do it. Yes, you feel as good as you could after a loss, just knowing the steps we need to take and, you know, the defending champs, like, at home and the schedule that we've had. We have a competitive spirit and a togetherness that is, you know, nice to see develop this early in the season. You know, playing the, you know, the defending champs on the road at the end of a long trip was a hell of a fight. Our guys really competed and uh, gave themselves a chance to win. And, um, you know, tough, tough way to finish, but um, couldn't be more proud of them and, and, um, and more excited about, about our team. All right, Mike. Uh, Mike Hill, let me tell you how this started, how we uh, okay. have arrived at this beautiful four box moment. Four okay. box. We love, the, love the brother from another four box. This is like, this is a, hey, 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 family. We're going to meet in the family room. We have a family uh, meeting here. We have to talk about it. this and we all come together. So this is how we got here, Mike. Uh, you know, I was, talking, I was talking with Liv about the best player in the NBA and she just said it's so... Uh, effortlessly, uh, you know, Nikola Jokic is the best player in basketball. And then Natalie over text was saying, I, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Uh, how about Steph uh -oh. Curry? And then they had a nice conversation. And I said, well, they play next week. Let's meet back here next week. And so we had the game last night. Warriors win. Jokic doing Jokic things. And mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 nugget, the Nuggets, excuse me, the, nu the Warriors <laughs> lose. Nuggets beat the Nuggets beat the Warriors. And so here we are. So I just want to hear from Natalie and from Liv Moves. What did y'all <laughs> see? What did y'all see last night? What stands out to you? Well, first of all, Mike Hill, I just want to say that's that's a bit of revisionism. Um, Holly set us up last week because he wanted this. So <laughs> he did. That, yeah, that little did. story. Yeah, he did. <laughs> that he little did. story he, he told didn't quite go like that, but it's okay. <laughs> um, okay. Listen, in terms of me, what I saw, I thought what I saw to me is a Western Conference Finals preview uh, once mm. both teams are healthy. That's what I saw. And um, I'm not really into moral victories, and I know the Warriors aren't, even though they said the things. But me personally, mm -hmm. I, like, I, Holly, you know how I get down. I always believe in the Warriors. So anyone who was thinking about last season and thought the Warriors, the way they ended in their season was them, like Steve Kerr said, that was the exception, not the rule. So anyone who was coming into this season underestimating the Warriors, a uh, shame on you. But I think hopefully now people see that they are on the level of a team like the Denver Nuggets. I do still right now think the Nuggets are the best team in the NBA. But I think mm -hmm. considering the Warriors schedule, how they started, they're what, six and three right now. They've played nine games, the most in the NBA, tied with the Nuggets. And of those nine games, seven of them were on the road. To me, they've had an exceptional start, and now they go home for a six-game homestand where they're going to close that gap. And so, I, like last night, with, with Draymond Green out and Gary Payton the second, and also Jamal Murray out, like I think both teams played well, and I thought they gave us a good game. Yeah, I mean, I agree. It's hard not to agree that this is these are two extraordinarily talented teams. I have to tell you, I, uh, I'm i glad that Natalie threw in there the Jamal Murray thing because I had plenty of Warriors fans in my mentions going, well, we didn't have so-and-so and so-and-so. We didn't have Draymond. Um, hello, <laughs> do you not know the impact of Jamal Murray? And he was not playing either. So I don't like when, when fan bases try to start playing that game. I know there was a missed goaltend call. You could argue there was also a missed foul on MPJ. Uh, that really wasn't what was the make or break in that game. Nikola Jokic almost threw it away at the free throw line. He missed two in a very, very mm -hmm. clutch situation when we needed points on the board. Steph Curry misses a layup. I mean, there's a lot of things that went 
wrong in this game uh, from a perspective of a, of a Nuggets fan. I won't speak to Warriors as much because, you know, they're an excellent team. But from a, a Nuggets fan perspective, there were a lot of things that they need to fine tune and fix. So for them to get a win is obviously great, especially against a guy like Steph Curry. I think what I was the most excited to see from this Nuggets squad is their ability to slow down the three ball uh, with this Warriors team because we know that that is their that is just their secret weapon amongst many other things on their offense, this Warriors team. So for them to be able to at least slow that down a little bit, I think was super crucial for them. Uh, I was really excited to see what the Nuggets did last night. Their bench didn't show up as much as I would have liked, but I think that's something that as the bench gets more comfortable, we'll see more consistency from them. But yeah, this is a Western Conference Finals preview, in my opinion. And I think when both of these teams wow. are healthy, it's going to be great. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, my your wow matches my wow. I just want to why I want to know mm -hmm. why your wow is there. Do you agree? <laughs> do you agree that this is a Western Conference matchup between these? Well, you know, it's 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 so tough just in the Pacific Division alone. We got so many teams right now that you expect to be there, like the Phoenix Suns. I want to see what Bradley Beal brings to the to the table when the Phoenix Suns are completely healthy. I, see I want to see what that, I that see Natalie shaking her. I, I, I don't. I don't, I don't expect like, that. I don't expect I, that. I, 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 I want. I want to see the Dallas Mavericks are playing well right now with Kyrie and Luca, and Luca's playing at the MVP level. I, I know that's going to be good too as well. But I will have to agree because I see positives in both of these teams right now, and I'm gonna be the positive person. First, let me start off with the Golden State Warriors. As Natalie said, seven of their nine games have played on the road, and you know the good thing about that, Nat is that they're five and two in those road games yep. where they struggled so much on the road last season, winning only 11 games on the road. That was their Achilles heel. And they're doing it without Draymond Green and other people on the team. So they got that cohesiveness there too. Steph Curry right now playing at the MVP level. I see a different uh, uh, attitude in his eye. He seems like he wants to prove something himself. But the Denver Nuggets, they're playing confident. They're playing like they're the NBA uh, world champions. And once again, if you did not respect that big man in the middle before, you have got to respect him now. They just look like a totally different team from last year. Even last year when they were made, made the run to the NBA Finals, I think people were disrespecting him, disrespecting them, expecting them to fall at some point. This season, I don't see any kinks in that armor right now because those guys really are playing at a top level right now. So a Western Conference preview, I would not be surprised whatsoever. But I still had to say, wow, because that's the first time I heard it. <laughs> Hey, Natalie, why why do you uh you, you you've said this before? Why do you shake your head when we talk about the Phoenix Suns? Now I happen to agree with you, but I want to hear <laughs> yeah, your mm -hmm. perspective on the Suns because you know you haven't been buying at all with the Suns. Never, no. I mean, Ooh, listen, wow. <laughs> never. Like, first of all, they haven't all even played on the court together. You know, so to me, it's it's preliminarily feeling like. Um, Brooklyn Nets uh, 2.0 and then you're mm. already you're already wearing Kevin Durant down by having him play all these minutes he's had to play without Bradley Beal who I know came back but um he has to play without Bradley Beal uh Devin Booker's in and out he's playing a lot of minutes Kevin Durant in the last few years his injury history you know he's missed a lot of games so he is an older guy not old, but older. So you, you're you wearing him down. It's the same thing that's going on in LA with LeBron. You want to put him on a minute restriction, restriction, but you're not able to. So you're wearing KD down. Book is in and out the lineup. They need time to play together, to build cohesion. And that's not happening. So to me, they're already now behind the mark. And then just in general, I like I don't think the way their roster is constructed, like they're they're constructed to be a high power offense. But when it gets to the postseason and defense matters, I'm not convinced mm -hmm. they're sold on them locking anybody up and stopping. They're just going to want to try to beat you in an offensive matchup. And I think if you look at the Denver Nuggets, I think if you look at the Warriors, the Warriors can definitely hang with that and beat them. So I'm just not sold on the Denver Nuggets and I'm not sold on the Mavericks because I mean, I'm sorry, like Kyrie's on your team. Like I'm just, I'm not. I don't believe in that team. They gotta wow. do it. They hey, gotta oh, do it. Oh, and get oh, there. oh, just that shot. Just that shot. That was enough. Whoa. That was her walkaway line on that one. <laughs> Liv, as a as a Nuggets as a Nuggets fan, and you look at, you always got to be aware of the competition. Who's coming up on us? Who who are we afraid of? Take the Warriors out of the conversation. Is there anybody else in the West where you look at and say, okay, yeah, we got to watch out for them. 
Uh, it's interesting because I don't know as a whole in the Western <laughs> Conference if I feel this way about this team, but I'll tell you, the Timberwolves match up really well against the Nuggets, uh, yes. and they have for mm. – Yes. This is not the first time. Their first, the only loss the Nuggets have faced this season has been to the Timberwolves. Uh, I think it says something that that team was able to compete with the reigning NBA champions. Uh, I think I do worry about a guy like Carl Anthony Towns' consistency when the playoffs hit. Uh, we've mm -hmm. seen him make some questionable decision making. He doesn't have great decision making skills when it matters most. So obviously, there's some, I, I would say that's a really great team that just needs some time to mature. Uh, and I think once they get that, which I think can develop throughout a season. That is a team to me that I would really keep my eyes on. Uh, they matched up well against to me. Arguably, that was the toughest um, team that the Nuggets faced last year in the playoffs, to be completely honest with you. that Those games felt way too close. Yep. They had physicality. They had size. Uh, so to be able to compete with the Denver Nuggets as a well-oiled machine that this Nuggets is, this Nuggets team is as great as they are playing. Uh, the Timberwolves have been very competitive against this this Nuggets team for some time now, so that would be a team to me that I would I would keep my eyes on for sure. I'm so glad you said that, Liv, because I was going to bring that up, and I was like, she might get mad if I say that. I'm not sure, but I'm glad that you you think the same thing as me um, with the Wolves. And like I'm going to say this, and I promise I'm not trying to take away. I think Denver was still advancing going to the finals last year and winning it. But I, you know, like every champion says this, this goes for the Warriors too, like in their first championship run, like you need a little bit of luck, right? And so getting health, having good health, all those things matter. And I was like, you know, Denver is very lucky that when they saw the Wolves, like the Wolves didn't have like all of their, you know, Nas readers. There were just people missing because that's a difficult matchup for them. It's also a tough matchup for the Warriors due to their size and athleticism. Mm -hmm. I don't think the Wolves are ever going to go anywhere because as a team, their team IQ needs to improve. And I think their coach is a little right. questionable with some of his decisions. Mm -hmm. So I think that Amen. will I think that Amen. will always hold them back that they're not going to be able to beat a team like a Denver or a Warriors. But I agree that they are they're challenging to play They They might Very. be like this year. Year's, this year's um, Memphis Grizzlies, except they're not annoying. Um, and so oh. they will they they will give teams a tough challenge. And my, my only point in bringing up Denver is that it's much better to defeat a team in five, even if it's a hard five, than having to go up seven games against them. And I think whoever the Wolves see this year, they can push any team. And it's going to be like, wow, they really wore us out in a long series. Well, yep, I, 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 yeah, Mike, go ahead. Go ahead, Mike. If Carl Anthony Towns can ever figure out what kind of player he needs to be in the NBA <laughs> instead of yeah. the type of player I don't think he, he wants will. To be. I don't think he will. I don't think he I'm will. Live. I will live. He, it ain't he just, if he just figures out, like, man, just play the role that you need to play in the NBA. Your talent, your skill, you can win rings with Anthony Edwards. You could be a, a contender every year with Anthony Edwards, but I think he's too far into his own head and his own ego. You know, out of everything, you know, was sad that we're not talking about. We're not talking about the LA Clippers. <laughs> we're not talking. And it's sad they got James Harden. They got all that talent. I told y'all last week that James Harden was going to ruin that team. And look at what we're looking at right That's now. Right. Oh my and gosh! Zero right. oh and two. I'm telling you. Yeah. Listen. The Sixers yeah, looking good it. over there in the East too. They are. Yeah, they, they are. took down the Celtics. Yeah, it's crazy the what Sixers. happens when you get rid of the toxic X factor. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, that's Ooh. right. Toxic. Toxic. Ooh. That's a that's a different Ooh. conversation right there. Oh, I know. That, that's, a, that's a relationship thing. <laughs> hey, thank you for watching Brother from Another. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, go ahead and do that now. Don't forget, you can catch us three to four weekdays on PeacockTV.com and on Sirius XM Channel 85.